Bob Salas is a former captain, U.S. Air Force Base. You have the, at the U.S. Air Force. He was at Maelstrom Air Force Base in 1967, where there were claims a UFO caused missiles to malfunction. He's co-author of Faded Giant. Uh, Bob Jameson is with us, former U.S. Air Force officer. He was at Maelstrom as well in 1967, and he says his superiors told him UFOs caused the malfunctions. And in Peoria, Illinois, is Dr. Bob Jacobs, former first lieutenant U.S. Air Force, former U.S. Air Force photographic instrumentation officer. A UFO showed up on film that he shot in 1964 at Vandenberg Air Force Base, and that was later confiscated by CIA agents. All of our guests are named Bob. <laughs> So I'm going to call them by their last names. We'll start with Robert Hastings. How did you get, uh, what's your explanation for UFOs at nuclear weapon sites? I can simply say after 35 years of research that these in incidents have taken place. Uh, there are hundreds of declassified documents which indicate that UFOs have demonstrated a distinct and ongoing interest in our nuclear weapon sites. I've also interviewed nearly 100 gentlemen who were involved in these incidents at various Air Force bases. Uh, this is very widespread. What you're seeing here this evening is the tip of the iceberg. How do they cause a malfunction? What do they do to cause something to not work? I think that's probably still an unknown. Uh, I know that Boeing engineers attempted to du duplicate some of the malfunctions. Uh, they did succeed in doing that, but they still can't call, uh, determine what initially caused them. Bob Salas could address okay. that. Bob, what happened at Maelstrom in 1967? Uh, 1967, I was on duty as a missile launch officer. I get uh, calls from my guards upstairs. First, I get one call saying that they're seeing strange lights flying in the sky, and uh, I didn't pay too much attention to that. About five minutes later, uh, the main security guard, the flight security controller, calls down, says he's looking at a glowing red object, uh, very uh, large, hovering over the front gate. Uh, uh, he wants to know what to do. I, I tell him to secure the facility. Uh, we hang up. I go to tell my commander. So within seconds of that call, uh, my missiles start shutting down. I recall uh, losing all, all ten of them. You didn't see the object? I didn't see the object because I was obliged to stay underground in the capsule. By shutting down, we mean what? By shutting down, what I mean is they were not launchable. They, they were in a no-go condition, uh, disabled. How long to restart them? How long to restart? Uh, well, I'm sure it took over a day and, and maybe... Uh, all right. Now, Bob Jamison, you were there too, right? Yes, sir. And you were in the Air Force? Yes, I was in the Air Force. And where were you when this was happening? Yeah, I was a, I'm a targeting, was a targeting officer, missile targeting officer. I was at home relaxing, and I got a call from job control to tell them to come in. Uh, a missile had gone down. My job as a targeting officer was to bring him back up. And so I went into... So you didn't see the incident. You just went to the missile. I went to the incident. I went to the uh, site. Where is Maelstrom? It's Great Falls, Montana. Just outside of Great Falls, Montana. What did you make of the story? Well, I know that uh, it's true. I went into job control after I got to the hangar. I was called in, went to the hangar, went to the job control, and I noticed they have a map of the whole complex with green lights where the missiles were good, but there's one small area with ten red lights. I mean, those missiles were out. Is it possible they just malfunctioned? That doesn't happen. Very rarely does a missile malfunction, and I don't think any... Much uh, more rare is, would be two at the same time, but ne ne never ten. Now, uh, Bob Jacobs, where were you? What were you filming, and where were you? I was officer in charge of optical instrumentation at Vandenberg Air Force Base from 1963 to 66. That's our job California. Was to photograph. That's California, so right there on the coast. Right. And our job was to photograph with high-speed instrumentation every missile launch from 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 Vandenberg going down the test range. Uh, they wanted to find out if we could figure out a place to put a telescope where we could get a side view of, of the missile so that we could see all three stages of powered flight. So I went up to Big Sur, California, up on, an air, on a uh, U.S. Forest Service road on Anderson Peak, and I installed a, a telescopic site up there. Uh, the Air Force flew in a, a huge catadaptic telescope from uh, the Cape. It was built uh, by uh, Dr. Walter Manning at, at the Boston University. They put the t telescope up there, and with that thing, with, which had a, a focal length of 2,500 inches, we photographed an Atlas missile raising up out of the, the, the fog cover and flying downrange. We got all three stages of powered flight, and as the 
uh, dummy warhead and the, and the package flew on down range, we were all celebrating the fact that we had uh, seen the thing and accomplished the mission. When I got, got back to the, the base with the film the next day, I was called into the office of Major Florence J. Mansman, and uh, there were three people in gray suits standing in there. There was a 16 millimeter camera and a screen set up. Major Mansman said, Lieutenant, sit down and watch this. And he turned down the lights, turned on the camera, on the, the, the projector, and the film came on. And I recognized it as the film that we'd shot at Big Sur the previous day. Toward the end of the, of the flight, I was looking at Major Mansman saying, pretty good stuff, huh, sir? And, and uh, suddenly he said, just watch this. And as I watched, the, the, the warhead, the dummy warhead, the chaff that was put out in front of it as a decoy uh, to, to deflect... Uh, the Russian anti-missile missile tracking radar. Everything was flying along, and suddenly, in the same direction, this stuff was flying at about 8,000 miles an hour. You an object came into the frame, shot a, a beam of light at the warhead, flew up to the top, shot another beam of light at the warhead, flew around the direction it was flying, shot another beam of light at the warhead, flew down, shot another beam of light at the warhead, and flew out the same way it came in. Well, I don't see Why said, didn't you see this when you were shooting it? Well, it was uh, six to eight hundred miles away from us. Oh, I got you. The and only they reason, confiscated. The only they they confiscated. Well, first of all, the, the major mansman said to me, "What was that? Were you guys screwing around up there?" I said, "No, sir." <laughs> and he said, "Then tell me what that was." And I said, "We got a UFO." And he said, "Lieutenant, you are never to speak of this again. As far as you're concerned, this didn't happen." Hold on, and guys. For I'll be right back. I got to take a break. Okay, that's weird. Uh, you think there's a national defense plan for aliens? Sounds crazy. We'll ask about that next. I'm not alone in witnessing something extraordinary. That's the bottom line. Powerful beaming spotlights. Angular in shape, like sitting on three legs. No type of aircraft that I've ever seen. Rapidly before. maneuver and quickly it's disappear. Accelerating to very high speed. Majestic triangle craft. What we were seeing didn't resemble anything known to us. Bob Jameson, I'll make this clear. You were asked to say nothing? I was not asked to say nothing. In fact, no one uh, admonished me and I did not sign a. Uh, an oath uh, saying that uh, so I can't say. there was no cover up as far as you were concerned. That's correct. So you, you just I can tell. I can, you, I can speak about it. You saw what you saw. Do you think there's a there's a, a plan for invasion by aliens? I wouldn't presume to know that. I just simply know that uh, the U.S. government does not obviously appreciate people such as myself and these gentlemen speaking out about this. What we're describing on an ongoing basis, decade after decade at multiple Air Force bases is dis disruption of our nuclear missiles. We have an email from Kyle in Plainville, Massachusetts. Why would UFOs only disable U.S. defense systems and not another country? Is there a lesson to be learned in all this? Or do you think maybe, uh, Bob Salas, they have disabled other countries? They have. Uh, I know that there have been uh, uh, events in, in the Soviet Union where they have uh, interfered there. Uh, they've been they've been seen in just a, any country you can name. Uh, you know, and they, they do disable communications, especially. We have an email from Eric in Atlanta, Georgia. What can be done, if anything, to force the U.S. government and/or military to declassify and release all it knows about UFOs? Dr. Jacobs, when do you think that would happen? Do you think that would happen? It, it would take a revolution in in public opinion. The problem with this field is that it's surrounded by so many crackpots and weirdos who, who make, a, make a joke about it that those of us who take it seriously and think that something is definitely going on that needs to be scientifically investigated are laughed at. The technician here in, in the studio where I am, I, I said we were talking about UFOs tonight and her face lit up and she got that kind of mm, look, which is typical of what happens to us. Uh, I think that we, we need a, a, a real a scientific committee to be put together to look into these things. I, I think Robert I agree. Talking this too. Absolutely. Bob Salas, you agree? Yeah, I would like to make a comment real quick. Uh, the Air Force has perpetrated a fraud, uh, especially in our case. They claimed uh, they claim in their uh, their statement about UFOs that nothing has there no no UFO incident has ever affected national security, and we lost 20 missiles uh, at, at, during the Cold War. Uh, they also stonewalled the. Condon Committee at that time, the Condon Committee had heard about our incident 
and were told to go away. They said uh, they were told that no UFOs were involved. And then the Air Force turns around and uses the Condon Committee as a reason not to further investigate UFOs. Robert Hastings, in doing all these shows, what confounds me is, if all this is true, what are they afraid of? What's the government afraid of? Victor Marchetti is a former high-level CIA official. Uh, he wrote the book CIA and the Cult of Intelligence in 1975, bestseller. CIA tried to prohibit that being uh, printed. He, uh, Victor Marchetti, in 1979, wrote an article regarding what the CIA thought about UFOs. He alluded to rumors at the agency of crash UFOs and the recovery of bodies of aliens. More to the point, Victor Marchetti said that, in his view as an intelligence analyst, he thinks that the power structures, the elite, the status quo people in every country on earth who are in on the secret are really trying to maintain their own power and status and don't want to rock the boat. Email from Christian, Brighton, Colorado. When is the Air Force going to stop lying to the people and finally tell them the truth about alien visitation? The American people are paying their salaries and they are supposed to defend and respect the Constitution of the United States of America. Bob Jameson, do you think we'll ever see it? Do you think we'll ever see an Air Force official, Secretary of the Air Force, come on and say, here's the story? Perhaps through more programs such as this, we can get the public tuned to the fact that there were are UFOs. They're not going to hurt you, I don't think. They haven't hurt anybody that I know of. And I think that there perhaps through more programs such as yours and such as the, these people are bringing out, and a government investigation. And would, an yeah. open investigation. There's never been one, right? Right. Uh, not really, no. I mean, in 1968 was the last congressional hearing on UFOs. 1968. 40 um, years. 40 years. We need another one. We need a strong one. Uh, hopefully the next administration will do that. There's been a lot of behind-the-scenes manipulation of Congress by the military li liaison personnel. Because uh, of what? Fear of what? Well, again, Larry, uh, these gentlemen are talking about nuclear missiles being dropped offline. The Pentagon does not want the Russians or previously the Soviets to know that. It's going on in the Soviet Union, as Bob Sala said, but I have interviewed persons who are involved with Minuteman missile bases in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they say this is continue, continuing to occur. I've actually interviewed a gentleman a year ago who said that his missiles were activated by UFO. And I described that in detail in my book. I asked him to come on this, this program, and he declined, I think, because he's uneasy about talking publicly. There are skeptics, not a surprise. Bill Nye, the science guy, is here when Larry King Live returns. It does not contain any pattern of purpose or of consistency. It was not a weather balloon, nor an aircraft, nor a missile. It was something else. I don't know what they saw in 47, but I'm quite sure it probably was Project Mogul. Nothing we uh, we had at the time uh, could, uh, could fit the description, size, shape. Go to CNN.com slash Larry King right now. Take our quick vote. Is the United States government hiding knowledge of UFOs? Let us know what you think. Joining our panel is Bill Nye, the science guy. He's a scientist, engineer, best-selling author, and Emmy-winning television personality. He's, by the way, a member of the Skeptic Society and a fellow with the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. Now, Bill, assuming that these distinguished gentlemen are not lying, we have three former members of the Air Force and Robert Hastings, who's looked into this for a long time. What's your thought? Well, in the skeptical world, in science, we look at claims. We look at individual claims. So I noticed that we looked, looked at the intro of your show and stuff. That you, there's several UFO incidents all mixed together. Uh, but let's talk about the one in 1967, right? This is your problem right. at Mel, Malmstrom Air Malmstrom. Force in uh, Montana. Montana. So the nuclear missiles went down, right? So if you go look at the documents that these guys have offered, if I understand it, as evidence. You look at some, and you don't have to look, read it, but you see there's something blacked out, okay? Redacted. That's a guy's home address. They don't want you to publish your home address. Here's one with a whole bunch of people's office phone numbers and stuff, and it looks spooky oh, and scary. Point? Well, it looks spooky and scary, but it turns out that that day, or the day before, the power had gone out in some of the chiller units, the air conditioning, okay? 
And uh, Boeing was called out. Boeing makes a Minuteman missile because all these things went down. So they the man who happened. called him and said he saw something outside, he didn't well, see something. Well, let me just say, when you see something, a lot of people see something. And a lot of people see things that are really, they can't identify. But that doesn't mean they were, it's quite a leap. So you're saying it's a coincidence this guy yeah. thought he saw 